So we're here in Estacion Central, Central Train Station of Santiago, as you can see behind me. Today we're going to go out to Rancagua. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So we're here in Rancagua. The train station's right back there behind those trees. And uh, it's pretty rural, kind of an area. It's not like super rural. This is, uh, this spot in Rancagua is like one of those larger towns outside of Santiago, but like when we were driving through, or when we were on the train going through, we are going through some pretty rural places, so. We head this way for a couple blocks. We'll be in the center of town. This, if you're wondering, is what the train looks like to get from Santiago out here to Rancagua. Pretty nice. Nice train. It's air conditioned. It's got screens that tell you when the next stop is. It's all run by uh, a division called EFE. And the interesting thing is, some of these EFE trains, you can just use your BIP card, the same card you use for the Metro at Santiago. But for this one, you have to use a specific card, a uh, separate card that you have to use to get out to the Rancagua. So, remember that if you come here. Park through an area back there, there's a lot of mechanics. Mechanic shops. The town is pretty big. It's not exactly a small town, but it is the largest, you know, in the area. So, I imagine it draws, like this is a commercial center that draws people from sort of around the area, not just from Rancagua. But it's definitely, it's definitely not the city of Santiago. You know, you get outside, even just a little ways outside Santiago, you can tell the difference between city Chile and rural Chile. Coming up on the Plaza, Plaza de Heroes. And there's a little, uh, little street walk here with some vendors selling some stuff, street vendors. It's pretty nice, it's a very nice day. It's a little hot, but you know, such is the way we are in South America in summer. So, here we're coming up on the Plaza. And the reason we came to visit here Rancagua specifically it's because this is the site of a uh, disastrous defeat for the Chilean Patriotic Army on oh, no. can see a monument here monument here Desparacio ahora la muerte Right here in the plaza, Plaza de los Heroes in Rancagua. It's really nice. There's like uh, little cafes and restaurants sort of lining the plaza. A lot of people walking around here. Some street vendors selling fruit and plants and little gifts and things. Some more little like, almost like little food truck trailer types over here that they've sort of set up with a little uh, like a little area to eat. It's really nice. It's got a really nice vibe here in this plaza. Everybody seems very chill. Everybody's relaxing. Uh, it's kind of the middle of the day, so it's a little bit hot. And across the plaza, past where we were at the center with the statue, is uh, the ca cathedral, Catedral uh, de Catedral de Rancagua, I guess. I don't know. Let's go over and take a look. While we're here, you can see all the stalls set up here. Really nice, very nice vibe here in the town. Very nice, like small town, small town vibe. And we're about mm, an hour and a half train ride outside of the city, Santiago. Mostly through like pretty rural areas, like I mentioned. 
on the way here. But, you know, this, like I said, is it's a town, but it's, um, it's decently sized. You can see closer here to the center, there are some high-rise buildings, um, office buildings and apartments and things like that. So it's definitely not like a tiny rural town. But, like I said, it is kind of the metropolitan center for this whole area um, south of uh, south of Santiago. It's definitely not like a suburb of Santiago or anything like that, or at least I wouldn't consider it that. Maybe other people do. Maybe people in Chile consider it a suburb of Santiago, but it doesn't seem like that to me. It seems too far away. This other kind of cool looking neo-colonial building here, neoclassical. The clock up on top, I don't know exactly what this is. Maybe police station? Oh, it's just like, yeah, okay. Gobernación Provincial de Chacapoal. It's a government building. And the church over here. Doesn't look like it's open. Doors seem to be closed. Catedral. Not only do the doors seem to be closed, but they seem to be like boarded up. So. I guess maybe this is, I don't know, under renovation? Or just not, not operating anymore. Definitely can't get in there. So we're not gonna be able to see inside. Catedral. It is a nice catedral. Say we uh, say we head down one of these streets, we'll see what the rest of the uh, rest of the city of Rancagua looks like. There's a nice uh, like uh, gazebo here in the square. Getting good vibes from this square, honestly. It's very nice. Over here, another Rancagua municipal building. I will say, even though we are outside of the city of uh, Santiago, you do get the same sort of thing here where you have like neoclassical buildings like the building that we saw over there and then these like brutalist architecture buildings here. Who is this? Jose Antonio... Jose Antonio Manso de Velasco. Founder. Fundador. Perhaps the founder of Rancagua. There he is. Along this, coming out of the uh, plaza here, another pedestrian walk, some street vendors, some shops over here. Really nice. I wonder what the population of this, of Rancagua is. It seems like it's actually pretty large. It seemed, I don't know, it seemed a little smaller when I came into the train station. But now that I'm walking around down here, I'm thinking it's it's pretty pretty sizable. I'm thinking it's at least at least a hundred thousand people. But I don't know. I'll take a look, do a little research, put the number right down here in the subtitles. Looks like this pedestrian walk actually goes for quite some quite a ways. I really like this. This is something that I've seen in a lot of like Latin American cities. Um, they had one in Mendoza, in Argentina. There's a bunch of them uh, around the center of uh, Santiago and also around the center of like Cordoba or in Argentina in there. A lot of these pedestrian walks. It's really nice to have a pedestrian area that's closed down to cars. People can set up, uh, you know, like street vendors can set up here. There's shops. Everybody can just walk through for a few, four or five blocks, maybe. It's really nice to have your central commercial district in your city be like this. People can walk around. Instead of having it be like, I don't know, like a mall with a giant parking lot, there's something to be said for a mall with a giant parking lot. And sometimes 
you know, you just want to like go to, uh, I don't know, like a Walmart or something like that, park, get your stuff and get out of there. But like there is, I don't know, I, I feel like this is better. I, I like this better. I feel like it's livelier. And it also allows for a lot of different businesses instead of just like one gigantic business with a parking lot in front of it. There's, you know, all kinds of stuff out here. There's clothing stores, there's pharmacies, there's street vendors out here selling. There's just all kinds of stuff and all kinds of small businesses mixed in with some of the chain stores. I mean, I saw like a Claro back there. There's a Cruz Verde on the corner. That's like a chain pharmacy here in, uh, in uh, Chile. But it's nice. It's very nice. And yeah, it looks pretty lively here. So it makes me think that this is a decently sized population. And it is also, you know, the end of the train line, basically, like the final terminal destination of the train line that we took. So it makes sense that it's uh, larger than some of the other stops along the way. Down here on this street, looks like there's some restaurants, bar, restaurant, El Quixote. We may have to check something out. It is kind of lunchtime, I'm kind of hungry. I would like to get like a, uh, something to eat, something to drink. I think we should do that. Actually, you know what? That's gonna be, we're gonna put that on the list. That's gonna be the list of missions here. On the list, get something to eat, get something to drink, maybe a beer. That would be nice. Let's walk down one more block, see what we see, and uh, decide there what we wanna do. If we wanna turn back around and try El Quixote over there. Because, I don't know, that place is calling to me. They have Cristal on the sign, which means I can get a beer there. Cristal, the beer of the people. Let's keep walking. Let's check it out. Another, looks like a restaurant maybe here on the corner. No, it's a just like a grocery store. Okay. Well, I don't see any uh, any more restaurants or bars. You know what? We're doing it. We're going to El Quixote. I'm gonna go to El Quixote back there. I'm gonna get something to eat. I'm gonna get a beer here in this nice town of Rancagua. And uh, then afterwards we'll do a little more walking around. We'll see a little bit more of the town for sure. Because we came all the way out here, right? We came all the way out here. We gotta see what we can see. I've spent most of the time here in Chile pretty much all of it except for right now, in Santiago, in the city, right? Hustle bustle of the city. And I wanted to, at least once while I was here, get outside of the city and see what it's like, you know? See what it's like in a town outside the city of Santiago. Anyway, let's go, El Quixote. So it turns out the part in the front is the bar and the restaurants in the back. And there's actually a kind of a long line of people waiting to get a table in the restaurant. So I don't actually want to wait in that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I want to see still in Rancagua. And we don't have too much time here because we do have to catch a train uh, back before it hits like peak peak hours. Uh, it's just a short trip out here to Rancagua. But anyway, just take a quick look. We got a quick stop. Yeah, Cristal in a can. And uh, there you go. Small town bar. Small town bar in Rancagua. Nice place. Nice place to enjoy a beer. Well, that was good. We had a couple of beers in that bar and uh, I actually got to talk with two, uh, two dudes who are from here. Uh, Eugenio y Pedro. And they were super, super nice. I got like we talked for a long time, a long time. They were very cool dudes. Um, one of them, uh, Pedro, he gave me this book. He gave me this book that he wrote, I guess, about uh, Salvador Allende, which is super interesting. 
right? So he gave me this book. We shared contact information, and uh, we had a couple of beers. We talked a bunch about uh, Rancagua and about, uh, I don't know, like stuff that they did. One of them, Eugenio, he, he spoke a good amount of English, and uh, he was telling me that he used to live in uh, Argentina, and he also lived in, in, or, uh, in Canada. So he had a really, really interesting life, and he was telling me all about it, and I got to practice a little Spanish with them. Very nice guys. Very, very nice guys. If you see this video, they, they both subscribe to the channel. So, like, if you guys see this video, Pedro y Eugenio, mucho gusto, mucho gusto, amigos. Mucho gusto y muchas gracias. Anyway, that was good. That was a good experience. I didn't film either of them because we were all just kind of, like, a little bit drunk. It's not, not, uh, not too, um, not too flattering time to, to be filming because we were all getting a little hammered. Anyway, try not to get run over here in the street. Oh, I'm a little hammered. We're walking back, back, back towards the square. I think I might have had too many beers. Walking back towards the square here. And uh, that was a good experience, I gotta say. You know, there, uh, there's some times where I'm out here filming, and a lot of stuff I'm filming is, you know, very... Uh, you know, sightseeing, touristy kind of stuff, and we're talking about history, and we're doing all that, and I realize on the channel, a lot of stuff that I don't end up filming is the stuff like that, where, you know, I meet some people, and we're talking, we're hanging out, and having a couple beers, and, I, you know, a lot of times I don't film it because I, not everybody wants to have a camera shoved in their face, and also, the experience is just different, you know what I mean? It's You get a different experience when someone's sitting there filming you and you're telling them like, oh yeah, I'm filming for a YouTube channel. And then, you know, you're sitting there trying to have drinks but everybody knows that you're filming them, right? Like, we're that's going to go on the internet and there's going to be like a bunch of people going to see it. Well, not a bunch of people, actually. Only like 300 people probably for this channel, to be honest. But... Like, still, it's going to go public to the internet, to the whole world. And everybody acts differently when something like that happens. So, I usually don't end up filming stuff like that. And I know that, uh, you know, I see a lot of travel channels that do film stuff like that. And I'm not saying that that's, that's a bad thing or anything. It's just that you get a different experience. Because everybody has sort of a different understanding of exactly what the situation is when there's a camera shoved in their face. And people act differently. So... I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm a little drunk, and uh, I think we've got to make our way back to the train, honestly. I, I guess just to say that that was a really cool experience, meeting those guys and uh, having a couple beers and just chatting about lots of things, about Chile and about my travels and about, like, you know, Argentina and Eugenio and his time in Argentina and, and you know, uh, um, Pedro and the, the book that he wrote about Salvador Allende. I don't know. It's very interesting. It's a very fun experience. I'm really glad I had it. And uh, I didn't film it, so you guys aren't going to get to see it. But uh, it was good. It was a good experience. And once again, I want to say to uh, my new friends, Eugenio and Pedro, mucho gusto. Mucho gusto y muchas gracias. Anyway. We're going to walk back up through here, back over to the train. I think we've seen a good, a good amount of uh, Rancagua here. I mean, we could always see more, and that's another thing. We could always see more of these places, but we do have to find, you know, a, a, a balance between seeing what we want to see and not spending like our, the entire rest of our life here in Rancagua, right? It's all a balance. All a balance. Actually, these guys I met, I asked them about what the population was here in, uh, in Rancagua. They said it's 300,000. So it's actually a lot more than I thought it was. But walking around here, 
it does seem like it's a you know a relatively large city. Three hundred thousand. That's even larger than Mendoza was in Argentina. That was under two hundred thousand people. So a pretty big city. And they they did uh, confirm like I thought that this is sort of like a metropolitan center for the entire area. And there's a lot of uh, farms and rural communities around here. But this Rancagua is sort of the center where everybody comes to uh, you know get done city things that you need to get done in the city. They also said that in addition to it being a rural area with like farm agricultural stuff around here, that also there's a lot of copper mines around here. And copper mining especially is very, very important to like the economy and the history of Chile. Um, copper mining is a, a major, major export copper uh, from Chile and has been a major contributor to the economy over the years. And like mining strikes, copper miners uh, going on strike has been like played important roles in some of the historical events that have happened here in Chile. Like the mining unions and the miners are a very, very powerful faction because of how uh, important copper mining is to the economy here in Chile. So it's a much bigger city than we thought. But it is still out here, outside of the city of Santiago, the big met metropolis of Santiago. And like I mentioned, it's a very different feel here. It is pretty busy, and there's a lot of people walking around uh, on the streets. There's a lot of street vendors, there's a lot of shops. It's hustling and bustling, but it just has a more of a, I don't know, kind of a chill feel. I, could, I would say it's kind of like how Mendoza in Argentina is a lot more chill than uh, than Buenos Aires in Argentina. Just a very different kind of feel here. It's very relaxed. I really like that actually. Oh, there's a Chinese food restaurant here. You know, I was gonna get something to eat when we went to that bar. Didn't get anything to eat. I'm still kind of hungry. And you know what? I had Chinese food when I was in Argentina. But I haven't had Chinese food in Chile. I think we're gonna do it. Okay, change plans, didn't actually get Chinese food. That was actually a Chinese buffet, not a Chinese restaurant. Auto Servicio, a Chinese buffet. And uh, because we're going at a really weird time, it's like 3.30 in the afternoon. I haven't eaten anything, so of course I'm hungry, but you know, normal people have already eaten and uh, normal people will not eat again for another few hours. So we're sort of in this like dead zone of time where restaurants like that place, they don't have a lot of food at the buffet. Some of the restaurants are kind of like closed. And it's kind of tricky finding a place, finding a place we want to go and eat. I really do want to get something to eat before we get back on the train. Like I don't want to get back on the train, take a two hour train ride while I'm hungry. All right, look, we're gonna find something to eat. We're gonna find something to eat in the town here. Even if it's just like a little bit of street food or something, we're gonna find something to eat before we leave the town. But then we are gonna get back on that uh, on that uh, train because there's actually like peak hours on the train where a it costs more to take the train and b I feel like the train's gonna be really really crowded. It was pretty crowded coming here, and I managed to get a seat, but. It's going to be like extra crowded going back if we go to back during peak hours. And uh, frankly, I want a seat. I don't want to be standing on the train for two hours. So let's find something to eat real quick and then we'll head out of here. Well, I found this kind of fast foody kind of place called Sanquechazo. Sanquechazo. And uh, it looks pretty good. So this is where we're going to have something. I got a plate. What you got to say? I got a plate called a calle calle. It's like churrasco, which is like steak, I think, beef with uh, I don't know some sides. It's gonna be delicious. It's coming. It's coming soon. We're gonna eat it. All right, here it is. It's like a steak with some French fries and it has mayo on the side and some tomatoes, some bread. Didn't have hot sauce on it. I added that, of course. We're gonna eat it. It's gonna be delicious. And then we really gotta get going. So I recorded an outro for this video, but for some reason the, the source uh, video and audio got corrupted. So 
I just wanted to record this video. I know a lot, not really a lot happened in the video. It wasn't very eventful, but we spent all our time in Santiago de Chile in the city. And I wanted to give you all just a taste of what life is like when you get just a little ways outside of the city of Santiago. So even though not a lot happened in this video, um, I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope you'll stick around because we have a few more videos coming from Santiago de Chile where I swear more is going to happen. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.